Okay, so I'm going to start where the photos finished off. I'm going to cover the stuff um, really as I see it on the hoof. Um, I'm kind of got a loose plan. Um, and we're going to do the stuff that um, Drew Brashler's videos don't cover. So the bits that appeal to me, the bits that I um, see as being possible issues. Your starting point, if you don't know this card, really should be to go check out Drew's videos. I'm um, a live practitioner, a sound engineer. I ain't good looking. Um, I ain't good in front of a camera so you'll never see me. Um, and videos are not what I do. But uh, talk to the guys at Music Group um, and they phoned me up and said um, we'd like you to get excited about this and put some videos up. Well this is me excited. Um, it's kind of deadpan voice. Um, the card arrived in the post literally yesterday, posted up some photos last night. Um, it's exactly as you would expect to see it from all the photos you've seen. I um, then went out and got the other bits. Incidentally, the card retails at about £185 in the UK. I think it's about uh, $200 in uh, the US and other prices apply. I also went out and got an SD card and fell through the floor. Um, the um, little retail place down the road, one of the national outlets, not Radio Shack, the other one, and anybody in English uh, in England will know exactly wh which one I'm referring to. Um, I, um, I asked for a 32 gig um, SDHC card. Now this is um, a class 10, um, 16 gig, uh, Kingston. I've had good luck with Kingston stuff in the past. Um, and I've actually nicked this out of my camera because I fell on the floor when they told me the price of the damn thing. One of these from a retail outlet, 432 gig, is going to set you back quite a bit of money. So bear that in mind when you're buying the package and go shop online. One of these batteries, which is a C123A, will also set you back a bit. There's another eight quid's worth there. So eight quid's there. About 30 odd pound for one of those from um, aforementioned retailer. Um, so that's 38 pound to add on top. But still a steal at the price, I think, for the uh, card itself. Uh, when you consider what it'll do, 185 pound is the price. Um, I'm old enough to remember um, tape decks. Um, it's, it's the price of a decent um, uh, dual cassette tape deck. So, I mean, to get a 32 channel recording device for that, that is plug in and forget, um, is uh, an amazing price. So I'm going to try and fit the battery and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so um, back and I've fitted the battery. Well worth following Drew's instructions. There is a little semiconductor or whatever at the back there. Uh, you have to put this side on first uh, to clip over. Nowhere near as easy as Drew makes it look on the video. So um, two and a half minutes of fingers and thumbs later, I managed to get it fixed. I was a little concerned about this battery. It's great, the battery gives you a backup. So if your power dies, this thing will seal uh, finish off the um, the WAV multi-track um, file, single file and we'll sign it off um, before it shuts down its own so you know you never lose a recording theoretically when the power goes down but I'm thinking what about this battery rolling around in the back of uh, my flight case well I've actually done a lot of that sort of thing. I'm not going to bang it too heavy because the thing really strictly still belongs to music group but you can see that once it's in, that battery is absolutely secure. It's as though it was part of the board. As long as that clips on, you're fine. Okay, so the next thing to do is to try and fit it in the back of the console. So now I've got to bring the console into... I'm in my conservatory, by the way. So I've got to bring the console into the conservatory. Um, it's just warmer in here than it is in the garage workshop or our lock-up unit, which is incredibly cold at this time of year. Um, and um, being in the north of England, winter starts around um, August and uh, lasts until about May. Uh, but we're now in the depth of winter. So um, I'm kind of doing it from my conservatory 
which is an annex on the back of the house. Um, anyway, I'll bring the desk in, um, we'll try and slot the card in, and then we'll see what we can do with remote control from an Android, if I can get that going. Okay, well, we're back. Um, took me a while. Um, I've actually, um, I've wired up the desk. It took me longer to wire the desk and um, update the card firmware than it actually did to update the, um, the desk firmware. The uh, console, for those that can't see it, is um, a Mark I, uh, dead on the back. is uh, 2012. Uh, July. It's a 1207 date on the back, which makes it uh, pretty old now. Um, and all I've done is take my standard um, full X32 console and I have wired up a set of speakers um, just for giggles. Um, and we've um, also put the router in. I'll show you in a minute the, uh, I, the Android app because that's not available. Um, the Android uh, screen doesn't come on unless the card is actually inserted in the desk. So I'll show you a bit of that. Most of you won't have seen that. I hadn't seen it until about a quarter of an hour ago. Um, you're looking at screen one of the card tab in the setup menu. So just to go back to home, um, setup, and then, as you can see, we scroll across, global, config, etc, etc, and we're at card on the end. Um, top left corner, you'll see that I've actually got um, a card, an SD card that I've uh, slotted in, the Kingston card, recognised it, no problem. Um, I formatted it. One of the things that um, you need to know, I guess, is that... It doesn't appear as though this card formats on the desk. You've actually got to format it in advance, which is only the same as formatting a USB stick or whatever. Um, but um, just something to be aware of. Um, I formatted a 16 gig card and it's now showing 16 gig, 46 minutes and 18 seconds of recording. That is where you'll see in the center of the screen um, it's got SD1 selected and 32 channels selected. If I scroll that down to 8 channels, you'll see that that 16 gig in the top left corner becomes 3 hours, 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Um, the reason I'm going to show you that is because I want to do something... This is cool as all hell is this card. Um, I can see applications for it well beyond just your ordinary recording. I have issues with um, playback tracks um, for certain name bands that require an intro, an outro and a false tab. For those who, don't, who aren't familiar with the phrase, I don't know how global that phrase is, but a false tab is where the guys kind of make as though they are going off and the tabs close on the stage. Um, or more often than not, the tabs don't actually close, but um, they do their good nights and they come back for another two numbers or however many. Um, and I, I have one band in particular that I've worked with recently that had um, three separate tracks and it was a bit of a nightmare doing that and juggling um, playback on the USB stick. With this card, it makes it possible to do your routine background music playback on your USB stick and your um, your false tabs and uh, intro outro um, as playback from this card. And I want to have a look at that. But also, as importantly, I know a number of bands that, are, um, that also use the X32. Uh, I've got a friend down the road who actually crews for us and he... Um, uses um, his band are electronic based 80s stuff they use click track and certain backing elements if you can record on these and fire it up from the um, the android app for instance um, then you would be able to um, to run everything from this self-contained i can't think of anything safer than running your recordings from an SD card. 
um, where you could actually carry a couple of backups and you could have a second backup card in your second uh, bay just in case. But you know, you're know you a lot more solid than you are um, with cables, wires and CDs, which is the way I've seen some people do it. Um, so I'm going to put in front of you there, you should see now, I think you can see most of it. That is your screen, your starter screen for the Android app. And you can see that you've got your stop, play, records. I'm going to see if we can do this as a two-channel recording. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to do some recording, um, which I'll do off camera um, to save um, a lot of faffing around. Um, and see if I can get a couple of backing tracks um, just as um, my normal uh, background music um, recorded onto the CD. And we can see what they look like. Uh, sorry, on recorded onto the uh, SD card. We'll see what they look like when they come out uh, on the screen. And we'll see how realistic it is for your drummer or your guitarist to actually fire up those clicks with backing on them. Um, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, just going back to the main screen, if you uh, go in through the rest of this first page of the menu, there are two pages on the menu. Um, you have a look at the first left dial for those um, that thought um, Drew was uh, flying through his screen a little bit too fast. You've got a you got a playback config uh, file there, and it's basically it's one dial. Sorry, I go back to page one, and then we know where we are, eh? Um, so page one, um, you've got um, up there just uh, above my finger. Uh, you get your playback config. You can play back from the um, SD card or from um, the USB connector that's in the back of the SD card, just the same as it, all, it always has been on the standard cards. Um, and um, if you're on the second screen, you can actually dial through those. Um, if you're on the first screen, you're just... Um, Basically, your transit control, stop, play, record, pause, etc. And on the right hand side, you've got your um, your sessions, which in my case is going to be a couple of different tracks. Um, and um, and we'll be able to hopefully fire those up and see how they, they go. Um, it may well be that what we've actually got is, um, I think I'm going to have to run the tracks continuously and put a marker in for the second and uh, first and second track. Um, so if we go back to page two again, so you can, you've got your option to select uh, SD card, USB interface. Going further down, you've got um, your channel routing, whether you're routing it recording to the SD or playing back from the SD. Not quite clear how automatic he is yet. I'm assuming that is just pay based on your transit controls. So in other words, if you pay play, it knows it's playing and not recording. You press record, it knows it's recording and not playing. Um, a little dangerous for some, uh, perhaps useful for others. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that uh, one way or the other. I think you've got the option there so you can lock down for just recording or just playback if you feel like you want to do both. That's fine. Um, probably for what I would do, I'd probably do most of my playback for... Um, background material and what have you on the USB stick and I'd use this as my recording if you like um, or as my um, intro outros so I've actually got uh, the ability to fade separately um, my uh, intro and my playback material and as importantly for me I take a lot of reference recordings uh, just two track um, off the main uh, left right uh, pre-fader uh, just to see whether I'm any good or not um, and whether the room was quite as bad as I thought it was that particular night. Uh, I have a, Nobody usually hears those. Occasionally I'll share them with a band if they're spectacularly good. Um, but um, there's always a problem getting the beginning of the set because you're fading down the intro music um or the playback music now if i've got one of or other of those on my usb and the other um the recording is done on um, 
the SD card that gives me redundancy without having to have any cables, any real estate. You can't see the rest of the desk here, but this desk is in a flight case tray without a doghouse. We're often working in quite confined spaces. UK theatres can be a little bit tight. Um, UK bars are even worse. Um, so we tend to try and keep as little clutter as we can because it really does um, make a difference if you've got everything at your fingertips on the console. Um, it's even um, playback from um, firing up stuff from um, theatre uh, music uh, can be a little bit difficult um, if you've not got the uh, table space. So, um, right. Um, I think I have shown you as much as I can and I certainly waffled more than I could so there's your second screen um, oh sorry you get your USB interface there that's pretty much as standard as you would normally get um, another thing worth noting if you have a look down the middle here you have a look at um, as well as your selection for SD cards one or two um, your SD recording is actually you you've got options of 32 track, 16 track, well, 32 channel as they say, it's 16 channel and 8 channel recording. You can't record just two tracks. Um, so I guess you would be, if I did it, if I used it for reference recording, I'd probably be recording um, two tracks with six uh, that were blank um, and then pulling it back to a left right. I'm going to see how that works because I'm really interested to see how that works. Just on its own, that would kind of pay for a peace of mind thing for me. Okay, so um, you've got your um, your page one and two. You've seen all that. Um, you've seen as much as me. The only other thing to add is firmware updates. I was running on 2.14. Might surprise some people. But um, 2.14 worked for me and I didn't need anything in 3 point whatever. Um, I don't um, do a lot of uh, auto mixing so I didn't need um, the Dugan uh, style auto mixer um, but now um, it was well worth me updating just for this um, and the firmware update from 2.14 to 3.08 was absolutely fine. Had a little bit of a small nightmare with the firmware update for the recording card. The card itself recognises as soon as you've got the 3.08 um, firmware in there. It will work as soon as you've got the 3.08 firmware in there. As far as I could see, it could anyway. It recognises cards. You can go through all the recording and whatnot. Um, but they have a firmware update, which presumably adds a little bit of um, functionality, corrects glitches or whatever. Um, and that download wasn't as friendly. I it wouldn't recognize the same stick as I'd already been using and as I've used for years for firmware updates. Um, I used another one of my Kingston sticks. I have um, some people have seen a photograph um, of my Kingston sticks. I will put those in front of the screen. You can see I have uh, God knows how many there. Um, one, two, three, four and they're just what's in the back room today. Um, so I had to use one of the other um, the sticks which is slightly newer than the old stick. No idea that might just been a, a glitch on my download part because I re-downloaded the uh, firmware update. That took a little time to sort out um, but other than that um, it's been reasonably plain sailing. So I'm going to do a little bit of recording on my own now and then we'll see what that brings. We'll see if we can do your final film of how that recording works out for playback and uh, recording on this screen that you see in front of you right now. Um, and then we'll do some more videos later. I'll, we'll start taking questions and I'm going to have a little bit of fun playing with it off screen.
So what do we think? Um, cool as all hell. Um, I'm really impressed with it, to be honest. Um, we were looking at um, putting those uh, two tracks over on backing tracks. Um, I actually recorded um, uh, three musical tracks. You can see them there, top left corner of the Android app um, under the sessions box. Every time you press record and then stop, that is a session. You can put markers in that session, but it'll run through. It will not run from session to session. So if you were running backing tracks and or click tracks, you could select one and it would stop. And then you could select two, which could be the fifth song in your set and it would stop and so forth, um, which is exactly what you want. I know some bands um, that run um, a three quarter hour set non stop with click and um, with um, backing. Um, but I also know as many bands that just pick and choose and actually change their songs on the fly. This is really easy to do. Um, if I select track one there, press play there, there's a short pause, but you can already see the timers rolling in the middle top. And there you go, you can hear the song. Um, incidentally, if anybody's interested, that's Gold Rush from the film Tower Heist. I uh, tend to use it uh, for taking my PA out for a walk. You'll hear why. There's some nice top hats in there, high hats in there, and um, general toppiness on it, and a lot of bottom end as well. I'll take some of the bottom end off for the benefit of the camera, because that never comes across very well on camera. So there you go, you can see it playing through. And what you see, let me just turn that down a minute, is um, what you see on the screen in front of you on the Android app is exactly the same um, as is happening just behind it on the main screen. Um, you see your timing information um, in hours, minutes and seconds past. You see your recording rate, you can see I'm at 44.1. Uh, recording um, you see the track that you've selected you see that it's on SD um, card number one and I can stop that track anytime I want and I can fire up track three um, and that doesn't go until I press play and if I press play now there it goes just push the fader up again and there you go I'm just going to move that to one side, see if we can get that sat over there and you can see the screen. If I go to setup and it's already on card, so hopefully you can see that wheel spinning in the background that is the tape wheel. Um, much like your old um, cassette tape on the USB, but it's obviously doing a real, real, um, a full reel, reel to reel impersonation. Uh, just take that down. Um, so, applications, I can see a lot. Straight away, I think all the church guys are going to love it for whatever reason. They like to do a lot of virtual sound checks and things like that. Um, and it is absolutely brilliant for that, and it is seamless for that. So, if you want to bring back last Sunday service before rehearsal on a Wednesday night or whatever it is that you do, you can bring. 32 tracks or 12 tracks or whatever, just as any other virtual sound check, except it's straight there, it's in the card in the back. Um, no messing about with laptops, um, no looking at uh, your buffer rates with your laptops, it's just there, it's all taken care of. Brilliant for that. Um, great for recording while you're using your USB for playback, um, as I might. Um, great for um, bands that use backing tracks and click tracks and the like. And to be honest, the more you look at it, the more applications you can see for it. At £185, I think anybody who's buying a new one, you're about the price of a flight case, and this is probably going to come in as handy as a flight case. If I was buying from the get-go now, I'd be looking probably at buying one. Um, if you have already managed to struggle on, as we have for four or five years without um, this so far, 
this would have made my life so much easier for lots of stuff. I don't think it's a replacement for the studio. Um, I think this is really where it's at, one hit recording. I'm sure there's other things I can get into with studio stuff with this. Um, and later we'll look at how we're either in photographs or in a video we'll look at how we unpack these files into a door. Don't worry, that is coming. Um, we will look at how that, how easy or not that is because that's uh, the other half of the puzzle as it were. I'm assured it's straightforward. We'll see how we go. But so many different applications are possible for this. Um, brilliant. The music's playing out and that's my cue to go, I think. Um, look forward to um, playing it with it yourselves. I, I'm told uh, dates for some of the pre-order stuff are December, I'm told. Obviously the factory, those that don't know, uh, should be aware that the factory have just moved recently. So they have issues with um, getting their factory back up and running. That goes right through the range. I don't think that's any secret. Um, the UK suppliers are showing it as being available in um, March, I think. Um, and um, if I didn't already have this one, Behringer can pry it out of my cold dead hand, frankly, because now it's in there. I don't see the point in me taking um, an XUF card out. Um, this does everything that you would need for remote recording on a laptop, should you need it. So you've still got all that facility. I do have to try the driver with that, but that's purely just testing out there's nothing different that you haven't seen already before with that um, but I can't see why you wouldn't keep this in and it's just there then and use it or not use it I had somebody come up to me at a um, show um, in the summer a festival a multi small local multiband festival and he couldn't get decent recording on his cameras and said, um, could you get us a recording off the desk? And I said, there's no point. With this, there is a point because he would have immediately, I would have just said, give me your camera SD card. I could have slammed it in the back or I would have had, um, had my own in my pocket. Um, and um, Bob's your uncle and uh, Aunt Fanny's your best friend. Um, it would have worked straight away. So there you go. Um, just pick the track you want press play, watch the counter roll, push up the faders, piece of cake, what more can you do? Okay, see you later.